It's been so long, I forgot how to do everything! Long time no see. How you doing? <laughs> um, it's been a minute. I've been working on some other stuff. Not necessarily painting related. So... I, uh... Yeah, I haven't made a stream in a while, so I'm back. Um, decided to knocked out one magma cannon. Cannon. Yeah, knocked out one magma cannon, and um, somebody up at the store asked me how I painted the magma. So I decided that maybe we would just go with a whole tutorial. Uh, that being said, stop looking at my face and let's get to painting. So, uh, the magma cannon is supposed to allegedly fire magma. Go figure, right? Um, but the... <laughs> Are you really going to start hitting my foot now? The cat's going nuts. Um, so, there's supposed to be magma over in this. And up here at the top, it's supposed to be boiling. And it's sort of hard to do... Um, well, it's sort of hard to imagine how you'd get this to look like magma and I finally figured out a way to make it work and so we'll start off um, I used a lot of p3s because at the time I didn't have these neat cool translucent paints that I got I got some war colors that like are awesome they're transparent they blend so damn well but this is tried and true and I'm going to show you the easy way to do this um, start off we got I've got technically six colors, and we'll just go through them all real quick. And the first one up is Scorn Red. It's going to be the darkest. So whenever you're doing magma, fire, anything like that, you want to start with your darkest color. That's also where the flame is going to be the coolest. Or flame or magma or whatever it is. Yes, I will try to be careful. I will try not to burn myself on the magma cannon. So we're just going to start, don't need a whole lot because we're just doing one of them and 
like I said, don't need a whole, whole hell of a lot. Want a little bit of water thrown in there. If you've ever watched one of the uh, one of the Warhammer ones, yes. Always thin, always thin your stuff. And basically, what we're going to do is just do a nice coat of this around where our magma is going to be. Okay. Just go around the edge. Try not to get splashed anything up along the rim of it because hot magma does not stick to rims. I don't know. I just don't like it. So we're just going to go around. We want the most thorough coverage out toward that edge because that's where this red is really going to lay down our color. Um, mainly doing it through the rest so it does we're going to do thin coats so a little bit of that red is possibly going to show through and also it will be it'll tint the rest of the color so hi how you doing Just going back, putting a second thin coat on it. To make that color stand out just a little bit more. Like I said, toward the center, I'm not as worried about it. it it's good to have it there. It might shine through in some spots as we do the other layers, but not entirely essential. So there's a little bit of goop and all that stuff over here. We're going to color that in like it's bubbling or doing something weird over there. So even even though the the cast isn't 100% over here, we're going to we're going to make that work for us. It'll be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to Kador Red Base. It's just, compared to our last color, it's a little bit brighter. Nothing, nothing big. But just a one step up. So we're just going to take a little bit of that. Get a little bit of water on the brush, grab some of this paint. And this red that we just did over here for the scorn red, I'm out here toward the edge and I'm going to mix that in. So I'm going to end up with a color somewhere between these two. And I just keep pulling the, the original red in until I like the color. That's good. It's not the, it's not showing. I mean, you can sort of see that red. It's that this little bit over here is just somewhere between this and that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Somebody's calling my house, and I don't know who it is. But as I'm looking for a job, 
we will definitely look. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to leave that outer bit. That's going to be our coolest where it's bumping up against the edge of this thing. And we're going to, we're at least going to say in our head that that is going to be the coolest spot. And we're just going to start at the outer and work your way toward the middle. Now, because I've done one of these, I know how I'm going to pull it. I know that there's going to be less of that around where these little bubbles are because that's going to, I'm going to make those hot. So I want to push that out a little bit further to where it covers up some of that very first red that we did. And then as we get to the areas where it's not as warm we're going to pull away from the edge and let that cool cool down i guess that's what we'll call it and i'm just using brush strokes to sort of give myself an irregular line. I don't want like just uh, like some kind of concentric circle drawn out there. I'm just using the brush to sort of go, using the very tip of the brush to just go out there. And then this little center section will just give a little once over with some of that red so it has that color hiding underneath there. Anything that shines through doesn't look real, real dark on us. So. Is that starting to dry? We could go straight over to where it's just Kador Red Base. Just grabbing a little bit of that color, making sure that it's everything's still nice and going. And we're gonna go out from these hot spots that we have. We'll work furthest away and work in. Make sure we're good and thin. It's still a little bit too much coverage. I don't want that much. I want it a little more transparent. Like that. So what I'm doing is these little spots that I'm going to say are warmer. Are going to get this. Like this is definitely warm. This is one of those spots where it's bubbling up. So we're definitely going to go with that being warmer. almost shading it almost to a glaze I guess and the reason we start out is it's gonna drop more paint toward the center so <clears throat> if you went from here out all that paints gonna end up out here as opposed to right there and that means there's more of that color out here and we want it to we want it in the center not that not the outer bit 
So again, there's a little bubble right there that we're going to say is a little bit warmer. And we're just going to reach out from the center of that. And sort of pay attention to those little ripples and stuff. Because I would think that that is where a rise in the temperature is. As it's trying to like bubble its way up and out of the boiler here, I guess. Yeah. So even though this is a bright red, this is still going to be one of our cooler colors. And so we'll have it really reach out. Especially from that like big ripple there. If you notice, I'm not pushing it quite as close to that. In my head, the wall of that thing cools the magma off pretty quick. And it's hard to keep that warm, so... I'm just going to go around and around and around. Once again, we're pulling that color back to the spot. Right here, we're going to be going out from here, and we want the concentration of the color where that little divot center point is. Just working that color until it gets to where we like it. So, next up is sort of one of those big jumps. I'm going to jump to Infernal Orange. But, because it is such a big step, we're going to do like we did with the last one. Take the brush out of our mouth. We're just going to give it a little bit of that Infernal Orange. We'll grab a little bit of it. In the paint. And then we're going to come back over here. And we're going to mix it with that last red. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the war colors are here. And uh, I... Uh, I think that I could probably do this easier with the transparent colors, but I didn't do it on the first one because I didn't have them yet, and so I'm doing the old school, real thin, sort of glazing them with the, with standard paint. So, yeah, if you've got transparents, they're awesome. <laughs> this, it makes this so much easier. So. We're going to start right here, and we're going to go out along this. And just very gently, very thinly bring that orange color, that reddish orange, into the center. <laughs> yes, you can always go back and simple green or purple power or super clean 
afterwards. If it really bugs you, you can go back and hit it with that. But I've already turned that one in, sort of. And plus, trying to simple green just the stack would be a bear. But it looks good. We'll get a we'll get a good effect. It just takes me a little bit longer to do it with this instead of using the transparents. Also, putting it on like this gives it a little bit of texture. And so, you see a little bit more. Um, this is, I, I can't imagine this being real thin. So I imagine this being very viscous, very clumpy. Like, I don't know. But, so a little bit of texture out from these is not a bad idea. Like, that one goes along there. It goes along like that. there like I said work your way from the out where you will want it thinnest you want that paint thicker toward the center of that so work your way back to that So over here in this little clump of stuff. I'm gonna work that. So maybe what's happening is like a chunk of the cooler stuff got lodged in some of the other stuff, and that's why we got that weird surface over there. I'm just working that up. And don't forget, this is the blend between the orange and the red, so it's not quite as powerful as it will be here in a second when we go straight to orange so we add a little bit of the water to the orange then it out real good get it to where oh, a little bit thicker than that there we go you can't see what I did on my hand. That's that's why you always see those little marks. I always test to see how the paint's going to cover because I got a good idea of what it should cover like on my hand. All right, so we're going to go back to this one, and we're just going to take those lines with the straight orange. We're going to where we went out with the red orange. We're going to just bring it back in just a little bit from that. Work our way around. And like I said, I'm just using the tip of the brush to sort of give me an irreg... Easy for me to say. 
an irregular pattern around it. Slowly working around those parts where we know it's going to be warmer because that stuff's boiling up. Move on to the next one. And yes, I stick my tongue out when I paint. It's just a little bit of that orange around there. Bring that around like so. Take your time, get it to where you like it. Said. Some of that stuff's going to show through from the earlier layers, which is fine. We just want to make sure that not too much of it shows through, especially right here in the spots where we're really saying that it's supposed to be warm. around like that. So, next color, Kato Red Highlight. Just a step up from the Infernal, well, yeah, a little step up from that. Yep. Grab a little bit of that, throw it over here. Now, the step between this and that is not that big a deal. Um, plus, you're starting to run out of area to, to really blend it in. So we're just going to go straight to that color. We're going to get some water. We're going to thin it down.
make sure on the old hand here that it's covering like we want. There we go. Double check it. Hmm. There we go. All right. So, really not going out far at all. And working our way around the little features that we want to say are very, very warm. Definitely say that that just popped, so it's going to be pretty warm. Maybe there's a little tongue that goes out there that's just a little bit warmer for some reason on that side. Like I said, this isn't too much different than our last orange. It is a step up, but it's not nearly the, the stuff that we've had on our last ones. So, right in the center, we're going to say it's still good and warm. We come up out of that bubble. Just around the edge. Pulling out into that orange that we just did. With these two little bits being together, I'm going to extend it out on that side. Sort of like the two are maybe connected underneath it and it's staying warmer. It's your call. little bubble here. I want that one pretty warm. Then the same thing with this stuff back behind it. But as it gets out to the wall, I'm going to quit real quick because I don't want to look sort of like something happened and it's cracking or something like it tried to form a crust and fell over or something I don't know exactly what happened But we tried. So. 
it's all starting to come together there. We're starting to look very magma. All right. So the next one, I, I jump straight to Cygnus Yellow. This is bright yellow. And when we do those big jumps, I like to take a little bit of it. And put it back in our last color. So, take a little bit of our Cygnus Yellow. Not a whole hell of a lot. Put it into our orange over here. So just out toward the edge, I'm going to catch some of the rims of this. And start working our way back into that center part again. Again, this is a sort of a step in between the two. I'm not worried if it jumps out a little bit. That's fine. I definitely want it in the center of these, though. Work it around to where maybe because it's closer to that, we stretch that one out just a little bit more. This one over here is by itself pretty much, so it doesn't get too far. here like I said toward that wall we're gonna we're not gonna push it that hard but maybe it sticks out just a little bit more this way good and yellow in there we're gonna start right here in that center Work our way out just a little bit. Nothing too big off of that. Maybe work it back a little bit more this way toward that clump that we have. And like this right here. We'll definitely get on top of that and get in there. So, just a little bit more there. Then we'll go straight to the yellow. Then we'll go straight sickness yellow. center of that. We're going to put some of this. Work it up there toward that rim. Get 
It's alright if you get a little spot out there, it's fine. Maybe just a little flare up out there. Right down in the middle, we want that yellow to hold pretty good though. This little bit that comes up here, we definitely want that to be yellow. Push it out away just the very rim of that. Almost like it didn't make almost didn't want to make it to the surface. In right in the center with that yellow and then we'll just use it to push the rim of that little bloop Then over here, where that one spot's at, I don't want a whole lot of yellow because I want to say that it's cooler. I want a little bit. As it goes back toward that spot, of course, we're going to stretch that yellow out just a little bit toward that other spot. And then, right here on the top, these little clumps that we got. that up just around and what we'll say is we're actually gonna go with the spot underneath it being warmer so right up underneath this I'm gonna put a little of that yellow spread it out a little bit maybe just a little bit along the edge of that like so but wait there's more so then it's time to switch we don't want too much of this but we want a little bit. Um, I'm going to switch over to a, uh, a white ink. It's Windsor Newton white ink. And I'm just going to grab just so little of this. When I say so little, I mean like that much. Most folks will tell you don't, th don't, you know, put water on your inks or whatever. I like to just put it on the wet palette and sort of Push it around a little bit to where I get it just where I want it. And that's about like that. So if you can see going over the other colors, it'll still cover, but it lets the other color sort of bleed through. Yep. And this is going to be our hottest, whitest points. So right here on the top of this, 
This thing is going to be white hot right there at the top. Right in the dead center of this one. Still going to be warm. That's still going to be warm. Right there. And then just do something a little different. I'm going to make it right there. Right there. Just the tip. Yep. So, if I get this close enough, you can see where, well, actually, the, there we go. So that white's in there, but it sort of blends with the lighting that I've got going. Um, but you can still sort of see transitions out here at this red going in and all that. So to give this a little better cohesion across it, we're going to put a wash over the whole shooting match. And it'll help tie those colors together where we've got some rough spots where it's like obviously one color and then the other one. We'll sort of tie those together a little bit. And so what I use is Cazador Yellow. It's just a shade. No big deal. I just don't want to put it on real, real thick. So I found with the shades, get a good brush full of that stuff. And then just take a little bit of tissue paper and wipe it off. And then just go in here and go across the whole shooting match. So even our lowest low now has a hint of red in it. And now it's all got that sort of orangey red liquid look to it. Once that dries. Now what you can do is if you want to try to make it look more liquidy, you can take like a little bit of gloss medium. I'm not gonna put it on there yet because it takes some it takes a good minute for that shade to come in. But you can take uh what do they call it? Um Citadel calls it Ard Coat and it comes in a little bottle like this. It's just a glossy thing that they put across it. I've also found that you can go to the, you can go to Hobby Lobby or whatever, and find this uh, Liquitec high gloss varnish. Does great. Um, yeah, save yourself a couple bucks. It'll work. Uh, yeah, I'm all about saving a couple of bucks when you can here and there. But if you put that on there, it's going to make that shiny and it's going to look a little more liquid. What you can do is to make this look more solid and this more liquid, if you take that hard coat and push it, do um, like a glaze across it to where this is shinier than that, might give you a neat effect. But like I said, that, <coughs> that shade that we just put on there is still drying, so I'm not going to do that on the stream. Uh, let's see. So, that's quick and easy a little bit under an hour that's how you do that nice little glowy effect that also works for flames uh, just remember that you're toward the center of the flame as you like if the flame is like this the center is going to be that warmer part so your whites and your yellows and your oranges go here and work their way out and the outer bits of that flame are going to be red 
the darker reds and everything. You can also do it if you want like green flames, lighter on the inside, work your way out as it gets darker. It just works that way. If you do it reverse, your eye catches it and it doesn't look right and you might not be able to put your finger on it, but it's not going to look right to your eye. Your, your eye is going <laughs> to your eye is going to tell you that something's wrong with it. Yes, it's red hot magma. <laughs> but hope you enjoyed it. Hope that hope that did something for somebody. Uh, and it also got me going back to doing videos. So uh, hope to see you soon. Go paint something. Thank you.